Praise the Lord. We're here today teaching. Teaching to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, Jesus says, in his great commission. So one of the things that we teach today, when Jesus said, let's turn to John chapter 21, verse 12. John 21, 12. Jesus says, let's read the whole verse. John 21, verse 12. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine. He commands the disciples to come and dine. Today is Thanksgiving in America, and the nation is thankful, but I don't believe that the nation knows what they're thankful for. Most people will be thankful for the meat for their bellies. Most people will be thankful that they have a roof over their head, or a nice warm clothes, or a a job, or a, a car, or friends and family. But Jesus says, come and dine. You see, the Lord always was inviting the disciples to eat with him. And he would invite the multitudes to eat. He fed the multitudes. When the Lord came onto the earth, the Lord was a God of comfort. And he fed the disciples. He ate with them. And he fed the multitudes that followed him. He fed them with real food. He fed them with bread, fish. Let's turn. Acts chapter 10. Acts 10, 39. So people are thankful today. They're thankful for food. They're thankful for shelter. And these are good things. They're thankful for their job. And these are good things. But we ought to be thankful for far more than that. Much more than just food and drink, meat for our belly. We're to be thankful for a God who has saved us from our sins. A God who has cleansed us from sin that we may be able to fellowship with Him, and that we may be able to sit down with Him one day in paradise after the death of our physical body, and that we won't have to suffer the punishment of eternal damnation in hell for breaking His commandments and sinning against Him, that He was merciful to us. And this is what we're thankful for. We're thankful for the gospel. We're thankful for the good news. But Jesus, when He came to the earth, he commanded his disciples to come and dine, to eat bread and fish with him by the fire. Acts 10.39 Acts 10.39 says, And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day, and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. Jesus commanded his disciples to come and dine. This was after he had been risen from the dead, when he was by the lake of Tiberias. And he commanded them to get out of their boats, meet him on the seashore, and to come and dine with him by the fire. And we read that God raised him up the third day, in verse 40, Acts 39, 40, excuse me, Acts 10, 40. And him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. When Jesus rose from the dead, he rose from the dead, not as a spirit, but as flesh and blood. He ate and drank with them. Let's turn to John 21, verse 13. John 21, 13. Going back to John 21, verse 13. John 21, 13. Jesus then cometh and taketh bread and giveth them, and fish likewise. He fed his disciples. He gave them fish and bread. Let's turn to Luke 24. Luke 24, verse 41. Luke 24, 41. Luke 24, 41. Go 
Well, let's go up to verse 40. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. He showed them his physical body. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And he took, and they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of an honeycomb. And he took it and did eat before them. He was risen from the dead, and he showed them his hands and feet, his physical body, and the Lord ate with them fish and bread. Come and dine, Jesus said, after he rose from the bread, rose from the dead, and he gave them fish and bread by the lake of Tiberias. And we turn to Luke 24:30. Let's go up to verse 30. Luke 24:30. Luke chapter 24, verse 30. And it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. After he was risen, again he eats and drinks with the disciples. And he vanished out of their sight. The Lord eats meat and drinks with his disciples. Acts 27, 34. Acts chapter 27, verse 34. Acts 27, 34. And Paul also. This is Paul on the ship, during the shipwreck. Acts 27, verse 34. Wherefore I pray you to take some meat for this is for your health. For there shall not be, for there shall not an hair fall from the head of any of you. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and break it. Excuse me. And when he had thus spoken, he took bread and gave thanks to God in presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all of good cheer, and they also took some meat. God is a God of eating and drinking, a God of comfort. Food is comfort. Comfort, we eat, when we eat food, we get comfort from it. A physical, earthly comfort. It fills our belly. And today, Thanksgiving in America, we are comforted by the food that we eat. But many forget why we are thankful. Are we thankful only for the meats for the belly? Or are we thankful for something far, far greater than meats for the belly? Meats for the belly and belly for the meat. But God will destroy both it and them. Let's turn. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse three. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. God is a God of comfort. When he came to the earth as Jesus of Nazareth, he fed the disciples and he fed those that were with him with physical food and physical drink. Let's turn. And it comforted them. It comforted their belly. John 14. John 14, verse 16. John chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. This is speaking of the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. For yes, humans are comforted by food and drink, but God is the God of all comfort. God comforted the disciples and comforted the people who followed him, the multitudes, with physical food and physical drink. And when Jesus had appeared to his disciples and had eaten and drinking with them, and when he was finally raised back into glory, 
before he left, he says in John 14 through 6, verse 14, excuse me, chapter 14, verse 16, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may be that he may abide with you forever. John 14, verse 18, go down to verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. God is interested in our comfort. He wants us to be comfortable. He wants us to be comfortable with meat and drink. Meat for our belly. Drink for our belly. He wants to comfort us. He fed us. He told the disciples, come and dine, he commanded them. Come and dine. Eat and drink with me. And when he left, he knew that they would be sorrowful, but he said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter. For he was leaving the earth. John 14, 26, go down to verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. When a preacher or a pastor or a teacher teaches or preaches, and he claims to preach or to teach with the Holy Ghost, we know that the Holy Ghost, when he has come, he will, one, reprove the world of sin, because they believe not in me. The Holy Ghost, when you hear preaching, will preach against sin. He will reprove the world of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you see me no more. The Holy Ghost will preach and teach righteousness. While Jesus is gone, we are to be and do righteousness while he is gone, and we are to look for him to return. He says, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. And the Holy Ghost, when he preaches or teaches, he will reprove the world of judgment, for the prince of this world is judged. So a Holy Ghost filled preacher will preach against sin. A Holy Ghost filled preacher will preach that the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ requires us to do righteousness while he is gone. And the Holy Ghost will reprove the world and preach against sin, the devil, and will preach the coming judgment. Sin, righteousness, judgment, and then we read in John, John chapter 14, verse or is it here? John chapter 14, verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, the Holy Ghost will also teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost will teach all things. If the Holy Ghost is there, he won't just teach some things. No. The Holy Ghost will teach all things whatsoever I have said to you, Jesus says. That's why it's part of the Great Commission, to go and teach, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, Jesus commands the disciples in his Great Commission. So the Holy Ghost is the Comforter. Then God is the God of all comfort, not only for our bellies, food and drink, but he sends us the comforter of the Spirit. His Spirit, the Spirit of God, is a comfort. Isaiah 49.10 Isaiah chapter 49 Verse 10 Isaiah 49.10 they shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. For he is a God of comfort. And it says that they shall not hunger nor thirst, Isaiah prophesied in the Old Testament, prophesying about those who are restored, let's turn. Revelation chapter 16 Revelation 16 verse 17 and John harkens back to that prophecy when John himself prophesied Revelation chapter 7 verse 16 
They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God is a God of comfort. Come and dine, Jesus commands his disciples. He gives them food, bread, physical food, physical bread. He wants them to be comfortable. And when he leaves, he promises a comforter, the Holy Ghost. And he promises that he will not leave us comfortless. And that he will come again. And when he does come again and receive us to himself, he will gather us together unto him. And the Bible says, John prophesied in the New Testament, that we shall hunger no more. And we neither shall we thirst. Neither shall the sun light on us, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne, the throne shall feed us. That's what Revelation says. He will not leave us comfortless. He will feed us forevermore. So let's turn. John 6.35 John chapter 6 Verse 35 And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. John 4, John chapter 4, Jesus says he is the bread of life. John chapter 4, verse 13. John 4, 13. He also is the water of life. John 4, 13, Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. Talking about the well, Jacob's well. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. When Jesus gives you that water of life, that water is going to be in you, it says. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Have you seen a well of water that springs up, it bubbles up, it's constantly bubbling, bubbling, coming up out of the ground, overflowing, overflowing onto the dirt? This is a well of water springing up. So that's how the water of life that Jesus gives us will be in the believer. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. John 7, 37, and then we get an even fuller picture of what that means to be given the water of life from Jesus. What does that mean that will be a well of water springing up into everlasting life? What does that mean? John 7, 37. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried. He stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink, he cried. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. If you drink of the water of life of Jesus, if you believe in Jesus and you drink of his water of life, you'll never thirst again and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Let's turn. Oh, let's see what that river of living water is. Verse 39, John 7, 39. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. That river of living water that will flow out of your belly like a spring of water bubbling up will be the Holy Spirit. He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. 
which is the Holy Spirit, who is the comforter, the teacher, who reproves the world of sin, who reproves the world of righteousness, because Jesus goes to his Father and we see him no more. Therefore we are to be righteous till his return, and he reproves the world of judgment, that this world is going to be judged. The preacher preaches on sin, on righteousness, and judgment if he preaches with the Holy Spirit, because out of his belly shall flow rivers of living waters. If you truly believe, because it says, He that believeth on me, not just the pastor that believeth on me, not just the teacher that believeth on me, not just the evangelist that believeth on me, or the prophet that believeth on me, or the apostle that believeth on me, or the deacon that believeth on me. No, he that believeth on me. That means you. If you truly believe, then out of your belly will flow the Spirit of God, and you will preach against sin, righteousness, you will preach righteousness, because Jesus is coming again, and you will preach the judgment of this world. And not only that, when the Comforter has come, who is the Holy Spirit, He will teach to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. The Holy Ghost will teach all things that Jesus has said, and bring all things whatsoever He said into your remembrance. And so will you, if you're filled with the Spirit of God, if you have that living water. Come and dine, Jesus says. Let's turn to Matthew 5. Matthew chapter 5, Matthew chapter 5, verse 6, Matthew 5, 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst not for meat and drink of this world, but blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Oh yes, we're to be thankful. Today is Thanksgiving. But we're not to be thankful for the food and for the drink, for the clothes and for the car and for the house and for the friends and for the family and for the earthly things that we have, the material possessions, the success we have in our secular life. No, we are to be thankful that Jesus Christ paid for our sins and that he's cleansed us that he's washed us, and that he's gone to the Father, and that he's coming again to receive us up into glory. We're to be thankful for the gospel, and we're to hunger and thirst for righteousness, and we will be filled. John 6, 27. John chapter 6, verse 27. John chapter 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth to everlasting life. I'll read it again. Labor not for the meat which perishes, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath the Father sealed. Labor not for the meat which perishes, labor for that meat which endureth to everlasting life. What is that meat? What is that meat? Let's turn. Luke 153. That meat is righteousness. Hunger and thirst for righteousness. Luke 1 53. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. The rich God sends away empty. No, we're not to hunger for the physical possessive things of this world, the, the possessions and the, the meat that perishes, meat for the belly and belly for the meat, but God will destroy both it and them. No, we are to labor for that meat which endures unto everlasting life for that drink which causes us to be filled with rivers of living water. Out of our belly flows rivers of living water. We are to labor and hunger for the Holy Spirit. Let's turn to Acts 10.39. Acts 
So have you truly believed? Have you truly hungered after righteousness sake? Jesus says, come and dine. Acts 39, verse 42. Oh, excuse me, Acts 10, I'm sorry. Acts chapter 10, verse 39. Acts chapter 10, verse 39. And we are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead. He commanded us to preach after we ate with him, after we ate the fish and the bread with him by the fire, the last thing he did was he commanded us to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature with the rivers of living water bubbling up from your belly, the Holy Ghost preaching and reproving the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment, teaching to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you and this is a commandment after he gave us that physical bread he gave them the physical bread because he's a God of comfort he comforts the disciples belly first he gave them the bread and the fish and then he gave them the commandment to preach it says in verse 42 let's go to verse 41 not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead and he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead labor not for the meat which perishes Jesus says Job 23 Job chapter 23 verse 12 neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food have you esteemed the words of Jesus' mouth more than your necessary food are you keeping his commandments and does your belly flow with rivers of living waters I pray that it does. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord.